Is it possible to create atmospheres where miracles can flow, signs and wonders can break out, and the Holy Spirit can move in supernatural ways? I believe it is. It's possible to create atmospheres for glory. Join us today as we give you some of the special strategies on how you can create a habitation. The program is all about you creating a resting place for the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. My guests today really bring a message that lives up to the title of this show. Tommy and Miriam Evans, these are not just guests. They're not just authors. You are dear friends. So we can have a conversation like we typically do when we go out and just sit down and have coffee. Well, I don't drink coffee, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, but I want to talk about what you guys have been seeing at your church, Trinity Church in Cedar Hill. God is on the move in a powerful way. So Tommy Evans, Tommy and his wonderful wife, Miriam, what what goes on at your Saturday night awakening service? Because this is like a normal church. Normal church, you got two Sunday morning services, but you have a Saturday night awakening service. What takes place there? Yeah, you know, we just really provide a place where the Holy Spirit can have His way and just manifest however He wants to manifest. Mm -hmm. We've seen so many people healed on a weekly basis, miracles, we've seen deliverances. We see people filled with, with the Holy Spirit in such profound ways. We've seen people baptized in joy. Yeah. You know, as we just, I, I really feel like just as we make place and room for the Holy Spirit to do what He wants to do. You know, our, our assignment, we feel like we are called to be stewards of His glory and His yeah. presence. And so we've just kind of make a place for Him to come. We don't, we don't restrict or limit the Holy Spirit on how He wants to move. We, he is our guest of honor. And so we're going to, to do whatever we can to make space for Him in those meetings. And sometimes those meetings can last a few hours just, yeah. just lingering in the presence of the Lord at the altars or whatever that might look like. And, and honestly, I'd say it looks different every single week. I yeah. feel like sometimes Mary and I and our services, we're just like, okay, Holy Spirit, what are you doing? Help us to partner with that in our meeting. And so we're just so honored to be able to host those on a weekly basis. Well, I think that's a very practical strategy because sometimes people wonder, how do we see God move and supernatural signs and wonders. I think it really begins with what you guys do, creating a space for the Holy Spirit to do what He wants to do. And Miriam, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that I see you operate in regularly, word of knowledge and gift of healing, how do you feel like the glory, creating an atmosphere for the glory of the Lord, the presence of God, do what He wants, how is that instrumental in seeing the healings and miracles you guys have seen, which I want to talk about some of those because they're wild. Yes, I just, we're, you know, Tommy and I just have such a passion to talk about the glory. And I feel like even just looking through the word, when the Bible talks about the glory, when the manifest presence of God is present, anything that people need in the room is that need is met, Yeah, you know? And so when we make room for his glory, for his presence to come, we really believe that that's when the miraculous happens. You know, I love the quote by Ruth Ward Heflin. Mm. She says that in these last days, what God wants to accomplish can only be accomplished in the glory. Mm. And I really believe that that is even speaking of creative miracles. Yeah, I think that we're going to see God come with waves of glory that bring creative miracles that the world is not seen. I think that, you know, even Jesus prophesied that he said that we would do the works that he did, but even greater works. Yeah. And I think those greater works come in the greater glory. Yeah. And, you know, the Bible says in second Corinthians chapter three, we have access to that greater glory because yeah. of the Holy Spirit and because of the covenant that we are under with Jesus. I'm going to ask this question because I think we're provo people want to encounter the glory of God. What does it look like? I, I want us to define what does the glory look like? I, I want to get both of your take on it. Uh, Tommy, when we talk about the glory, what does it look like? It honestly could look different, mm. to be honest with you. It, it could look like the weighty presence, that Kabod yeah. glory coming in the room where you can hardly stand. Where people are, I mean, or, I've been in yes. meetings where everybody's on their on face. Their, on, the fa on their face or just in the room where they're just getting refreshed in the glory. You know, a lot of times we've got to be really careful, especially as leaders of the church. You know, sometimes we just, you know, we kind of get them in and we get them out, get them in and get them out. And it's, it's always about, you know, restricting the Holy Spirit. But when you begin to let him move, it's like you get people that really need to be refreshed, can be refreshed in the glory. 
Yeah. Uh, people, it's kind of like, you know, we like to describe it as the master physician walking in the room mm. and he begins to manifest based on what the need is. Wow. Sometimes people, they need to be healed and we, you know, it can, it can look uh, as healing or miracles or maybe like we were saying a while ago, it could be the joy. You know, we had a man one time um, who was clinically depressed and he was actually, we did not know this at the time, he was a pastor and his doctor said, you have got to take a six month sabbatical. He was dealing with clinical depression and um, we were ministering and the presence was really strong. And as we walked across the front of the room, this man, I, we made eye contact and I just stuck my hand up and he grabbed my hand and he jumped up, he fell out into the floor and he laughed hysterically in the glory. He got completely whacked by God well, with the well. joy of the Lord. He got, he got up, he tells his story and all of the heaviness, all of the despair, yeah. he was completely healed and he was able to get off his medications and go back to pastoring his church. Well. So it can look different uh, and, and it really just depends on what the master's doing. Yeah. And we just try to partner with that. But I ask you in a minute, I want you yes. to pray into that right yes. now because I, well, I sense there's actually a glory for the joy of the Lord yeah, to be yeah. released because as you shared that testimony, I believe what it does is it lets the people know you're watching right now. If you're dealing with anxiety, fear, worry, particularly crippling depression, I believe the Spirit of God wants to manifest right there where you are. Would you pray into that, Tommy? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I just want to encourage you watching one of the vehicles that God is using to release His glory is actually through joy. Yeah. Joy can shift a city. It can shift your home. And so we're just going to release that right now in yeah. Jesus' name. So, Father, we just declare over every viewer that's watching right now that Psalm 1611, that in the presence presence of the Lord, yeah. there is fullness uh. of joy. And so, Lord, we just release that right now. Lord, where there is depression, heaviness, anxiety, yes. we command it to go. And we just declare the laughter yeah, of on. God, the joy of God to fill that room. Righteousness, yeah. peace, and joy in the Holy yes. Spirit. So we just release that now over you right now in Jesus' name. Yeah. Do you know why we did that is because when Tommy shared that testimony of the Holy Spirit touching that man, setting him free, I felt like the Lord said, let those who are watching know that the God who moved in that service on that man wants to do it again. Come on. And that is yes. the, well, we'll talk about that later, the power of the testimony, but that is an essential part, I believe, Absolutely. to creating an atmosphere Absolutely. for the glory. What does the glory look like to you, Miriam? Wow, the glory looks like people being healed without anybody touching them. Come you on. know, I love that. We lo listen, you know, don't get me wrong. We believe in the biblical basis of the laying on of hands. Hebrews 6 says that it's an elementary teaching, the laying on of hands. We love it. We still will do that. We will honor that operation. But I got to tell you, my favorite is when the glory of the Lord comes into a meeting that we're in, whether we're, you know, at Trinity on Saturday night, whether we're traveling, we've seen this in several different venues where people are healed without anyone touching them. And I love it because the glory glory is outside yeah. of time and space. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah. we even see God healing people in the glory with a word, whether it be a word of testimony, a word of knowledge, yeah, yeah. you know, where the presence of God, we've, we've had, you know, deaf ears open in the glory without anyone touching them. We've had blind eyes open in the glory without anyone touching them. We've had tumors and growths dissolve without anyone touching them. What I want to do, Miriam, glory, I yes. want in the next segment, I want you to share some of these testimonies. Yes. I believe the glory is going to manifest yes. my name because there's such a presence of the Lord right now on set. And actually in our little break, the Lord said he wants our guests, Tommy and Miriam Evans, to bombard you with glory testimonies. Wow. And I believe where you are sitting right now, I've said this on some other shows. If you are driving heavy machinery, you might want to pull over. I believe the spirit of the Lord is going to touch you. What he has has done in the miracles you've seen, I believe he's getting ready to do again. So I want you both to share some of the glory miracles you've seen. Tommy, you start. Miriam, we'll go to you. Yeah, well, I'll share the, uh, a testimony we recently had happen in our service. There was a woman who had come with her daughter. She had driven over a, an hour uh, away just to be in our service. 
And, but she was just coming to encounter the presence of God. She wasn't even looking for a healing. But she was 80% deaf in both ears. She had uh, hearing aids in her ear. Mm -hmm. And um, she came to the service and she was just worshiping the Lord and just enjoying the presence of God. And all of a sudden, she thought that there was something wrong with her hearing aids. So she took them out. She's like, well, I've got to put my new batteries in. I've got a new battery pack because I don't want to miss anything. Well, when she took her hearing aids out of her ears, to her surprise, she was 100% healed. Her ears opened up 100%. She can hear perfectly wow. without her hearing aids. And the interesting part of that was is she wasn't even looking for healing. Mm. She wasn't there for That's healing. Yeah. And it just happened in the world worship part of our service. And so she and she said, I've got to testify. I, the Lord healed my ears and I can hear perfectly. I even went out into the hallway and had somebody whisper and I can hear, I can hear. And so she was just completely blown away yeah. as God touched her with his goodness. And she wasn't even, yeah. it was an accidental miracle yeah. that happened in the glory. I want you to pray right now, Miriam, yes. for deafness. I actually believe yeah, the yeah. authority of the Lord is here to yes. heal people who are deaf. And then I want you to share a testimony, but could you pray into that? Yeah, we just pray even now over the air. Airwaves. We have seen this happen where the glory of the Lord begins to transfer through the online, yeah. through television. And so the same way that God did it for this woman, we say, yeah. according to Psalms 126, yes. God, do it again. Restore us to those miracles. So I just speak yeah. restoration to every deaf ear, ringing of the ear, tinnitus, yeah. whatever. It could be an ear infection. We just speak a full restoration and a healing to every ear ear that needs a touch from God right now in Jesus name. May the glory yeah, of the Lord yeah. overshadow you in this very yeah. moment. And even those of you that are watching this at a later time, some of you may know of someone who needs a healing in the ear. We want to tell you, share this broadcast. We believe that the glory of the Lord is going to open up ears and we release it now in Jesus, Jesus. name. Yeah. And the Lord is saying also he's healing ear issues that you've tolerated. It. Mm. Come on. Like as you were talking about even ringing of the ears or yeah. ear infection, sometimes we don't even ask the Lord to heal certain things because we have tolerated them. Yeah. But wow, the glory when the presence of God shows up, just like the lady who wasn't even thinking about yeah. removing her hearing aids, she got touched. I believe as we see an increase of glory, we're going to see an increase of miracles that people weren't even looking for. Yeah, like Miriam, talk about testimony you've seen that's been... Yeah. Wow, it's so incredible. Yeah, we've just seen people, I just remember one, the very first time that this had ever happened. I was talking about the Holy Spirit. It was a very small group, like 10 people, maybe 15 in the room. And all of a sudden I look over to my left and this gentleman's just weeping. Mm. And I'm like, what's happening? And he said, you don't understand. He said, I came to this. We were doing a small training. He said, I came to this training by faith. I have a horrible back injury that I got on the job. He said, I've been in excruciating pain. And he said, right Right now, as you were talking, he said the the bones in my spine just begin to pop into place. No, I looked behind me to see if anybody was behind me and no one was there. And he said, all the pain is gone. And that was the first time I had ever seen that. And so just about a month ago, I was reminded of that testimony. And I was in a group of probably maybe like 80 women. And I shared that testimony about the gentleman with the back. And the next day I got a message of a woman that said, when you shared the testimony of the gentleman with his spine popping back into place. I went home. She has unalignment. She had an unalignment in her spine and in her hips. And she said, I went home and I said, oh God, I really wish that that could happen to me. And she said, I went to bed in the middle of the night. She said, I turned over. And when I turned over, the bones in my back popped back into place. And I found that all of my pain was completely gone. Come on. And so we're finding that God's glory is being released released through the word and through the power of the testimony. Yeah. We've been seeing this on the rise that whether people are in the room, whether they're at home watching right. on television or online, that the glory of the Lord is coming. I like to call it healing by hearing yeah. and people yeah. are being healed by hearing the word of the Lord. What does it do when they hear that testimony? What do you think it does inside of them that makes them accessible 
to God's healing power. I honestly believe it's out of the book of Romans that says that faith comes by hearing yeah. and hearing the word of God, that faith is being birthed in the heart of the people that are hearing the good news. You know, Revelations 19 says the testimony of Jesus yeah. is the spirit of prophecy. So when we release the testimony of what Jesus has done, it prophesies to those that are listening that what God did for someone else, it prophesies that he's going to do the same for them yeah. as well. Well, and the fun thing is that we're talking about these miracles, and I believe faith is being stirred for people at home. Obviously, we've prayed for a few people. Um, but one of the things we talk about is what God has been doing in some of your meetings. But the wonderful thing, and this is what I know about both of you, is that you don't believe it is restricted to a meeting. It's not restricted to a church. It's not, well, you have to come to our particular church or go to this particular place to experience this. This is something that we can cultivate in our everyday lives. I mean, what what do you do? I mean, Tommy, what do you do to cultivate that atmosphere in your own life for the glory of God? Honestly, it's worship. It mm. begins with worship. It begins with praise. You know, Ruth Ward Heflin, we love her, and she was a prophetess. She's went on to be with the Lord, but she said that you, you praise until the spirit of worship comes. You worship until the glory comes, and then you stand in the glory. And that's something that we've learned. We're like, God, just let us be a 24-hour house of praise and yeah. worship where we just cultivate that in the secret place with the Holy Spirit. And so as we've done that and we, we talk about the testimony, we, we, we praise, we worship. And I'm telling you, every time that happens and we just make room for him, he just comes in a, in a profound way. We've, it's happened with our kids. So we're sitting around the dinner table. We're worshiping yeah. together. Or maybe we're sharing a testimony and the presence of God will come into the room. And, and it just we just get wrecked and blasted together. And so, yeah. Yeah. you know, for those of you watching, the, the same can happen for you. You know, you can be touched just sharing the testimony with your family family or making place to worship and to praise. Yep. Yep. And it's transferable. I, I transferable. love it. It's not Absolutely. restricted again to a conference, to an event, to no, a service. That is some, I mean, basically what you guys experience on your Saturday night gatherings where God has been moving in such power. These are things that you just cultivate in your own lives. And it's a yes. wonderful spillover of Absolutely. that. And what I want to encourage, we have one more segment. I believe the Lord is going to activate you. Yeah. I actually really sense the Lord is going to take your testimony of what God has done in your life and show you that how every time you open up your mouth and share the mighty works of God and his miracles, it will release a repeat about the glory and creating environments and atmospheres of the glory. And the good news is people don't need to go to a church service or a gathering or a meeting. Those things are wonderful. Mm -hmm. I encourage people to go, but they can create that atmosphere for the glory of God in their own everyday lives, in their homes, which is fantastic. But I really sense the Holy Spirit hovering on this concept of the testimony. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was thinking in the book of Judges, it's probably one of the most sad scriptures in the Bible where it talks about a generation arose, Judges chapter two, that did not know the works of the Lord. It doesn't say they arose and they didn't know the theology of the Lord. Theology is great, but they didn't know the works of the Lord, and thus a generation rebelled. I think it is vital for all of us, and that includes you who are watching, to be talking constantly about what God is doing. Because what happens when we do that? What happens, I mean, Miriam, what happens when we share the testimony of what God does? Miracles are released. So I believe that when we share testimonies, the power of God is released. The faith of God begins to get birthed in the hearts of the people who hear it. And they're open to receive what God has for them. Yeah. I think we'll talk a little bit more, but I really sense we need to pray into this, yeah, Tommy. Because yeah. th those of you who are watching, I know, again, we, we've prayed for you to receive healing. We prayed for you to receive miracles. I believe you are supposed to be a walking, talking dispenser of the miraculous. Yeah. You are supposed to actually, do, and it's not overly complicated. It's literally your daughter talking about what God had done. And then that actually plants a seed of faith in her friends. Like, you know what? Could God do this? I mean, we're not talking super spiritual stuff, but it all is catalyzed by people like you, like me, like you, going around and talking about what God has done in your life. Tell me, would you pray into that? Because I actually send, I see the Lord highlighting those miracle stories in our viewers' lives, because all of us have seen God do the miraculous. And I believe there's still an anointing on those stories to release healing glory. Yeah. Would you pray, would you pray into that? Yeah. 
So, Father, we just declare right now over every person watching right now, Lord, we just declare breakthrough yeah, oh, in the miraculous, yeah. in the glory, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we just de declare that the, that the testimony of Jesus is prophesying. Yes. Even these testimonies that we're sharing now, it's prophesying that God is going right. to release these. I just feel like God is going to release God's stories over you. Yeah. Yeah. God's stories in Jesus' name are, are going to happen. They're going to begin to take place in your life in Jesus' Jesus name and and so so Lord we just declare the miraculous we declare a creative realm yes. over every person watching now in Amen. Jesus name yes. and father we thank you Holy Spirit for what you're doing there's people watching right now yep, yep. that this is bearing witness with your spirit and God is beginning to stir you he's creating a hunger and a desire for this and I want to tell you if you're hungry for this I want to tell you that your hunger is actually a divine invitation yes. from God to take you into this place and so so we just release that now in Jesus name. Yeah. Yeah. Do you are you receiving any kind of words of knowledge or anything that the, I mean, anything that the Lord is placing on your heart? I want you to share. Yes, actually, I really do. I really feel like not only is it the deaf ears that we mentioned earlier, but I even feel with incurable diseases. Yeah, yeah, Listen, yeah. it doesn't matter how small it is. One time the Lord told me if it matters to them, it matters to me. So whatever it is that you need healing for, but specifically with incurable diseases, yeah, yeah. Uh, multiple sclerosis. Right now, we just declare yes. that that bows to the name of Jesus. And we just release the hope of God to know that you don't have to work any harder for your healing, but the grace and mercy of the finished work of the cross is enough for you to enter into healing right now. I even see that there's someone that's had two surgeries and you're actually scheduled for the third. I actually had a dream about this a couple nights ago that we were supposed to release healing to you, yeah. the miraculous power of Jesus. We honor the medical community. Yeah. Yeah. We do not believe that's a second class healing, but God, I believe right now you are accelerating healing into people's bodies right now, specifically for those that need surgeries into their body. God, you are the great physician. Mm. Lord, I thank you that you're even sending angels now, healing angels that yeah. work on the behalf of God. God to begin to move on body parts. I even see spines right now. God is touching spines right now that need to come into alignment, uh, spinal injuries. I see discs right now getting healed and the, the uh, inflammation being reduced right now in Jesus name, inflammation of the nerves, uh, nerve pain right now. I just command you to be healed in yeah. Jesus name. And I just see even neurology being healed right now in the glory of God. We had an Uber driver show up to one of our meetings that had severe neuropathy and God healed her uh, in the glory. So we just declare right now neuropathy is being healed and the glory of God is bringing a shalom peace. I just see this peace of God coming over the nerves right now in Jesus name. Yeah, And God, obviously, I believe he's touching all of you. He's healing all of you. But as you're praying some of these things, this is going to sound strange, but we're just going to go after it. I actually feel like some of you, as Miriam was delivering those words of knowledge and that was you, I actually believe some of you watching are feeling heat, almost like an intense heat or electricity on the areas that are afflicted, on the areas you need healing for. I want to encourage you to actually go back to the doctor and have those checked out. I really believe the Lord, as, as those yes. words were being released, that the power and the presence of God was coming upon you. And you might think, well, what if I didn't feel anything? Well, go continue to check it out. But I felt like the Holy Spirit it was highlight. I mean, I literally saw somebody screaming and saying, ah, as they felt electricity or heat. Why? Because when the glory shows up, it is tangible. That's right. It is. And that's the kind of healing. Those are the kind of miracles we are pressing into. Uh, Goodness gracious, well, I have this wonderful presence of the Lord. Tommy, any final things that you'd want to share for the folks who are watching just yeah. about the glory and the presence of God? Yeah, we just want to encourage you to continue just to go after it. Yeah. Go after it like your life depended on it. I love what so Catherine good. Coleman said. She says, I've died a thousand deaths. And sometimes we've got to die to ourselves to pursue all 
that Jesus is and all that he's releasing. So just we just want to encourage you, pursue, just pursue a time with the Holy Spirit, intimacy with God to learn how to steward the glory. Because I believe that many of you are watching right now and you're so hungry for this. And there's a reason why you're hungry. It's because you're called to it. You're called to abide in the glory. You're called to carry the glory. So we just want to encourage you now. We just release that divine impartation. We just declare that there would just be such a breakthrough over your life in Jesus name. And we just, I also feel like there's people watching right now. We want to say this, the blood of Jesus qualifies you yeah. to carry the glory. I feel like there's somebody watching. Well, I don't feel qualified. You're qualified because yes. he's already qualified you on yep. the cross. And so we just want to encourage you with that.